Welcome to the R video tutorial on scatter pots in R part three. More plotting options. Okay, so we're going to pick up right where we left off. We're going to read in the data and we're going to create the plots we made last time. So let's go through and make these plots, at least the first one, and see what it looks like just so we remember. So we're going to run it, read in the data. Let's zoom in. Notice we have nice circles where all the points are, our labels are on there. So everything looks good here. Then the next one we did was, is we went and connected the dots. So we connected the dots, changed the line width, and added a line onto it. So let's give this one a go so we remind where we were. Okay, so this has no circles, but it connected the dots, and it has a nice blue line that cuts through it. And then we have this uh, line of best fit, which is this dotted line that cutting down through here, this red dotted line is the line of best fit or the least squares line. Now what we want to do is kind of create both of these. Notice the one before had points and this one has lines. Well, what if we wanted to have points and lines? So let's go ahead and create that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste our first plot here. That way we can work with it again. So copy it, come down here, give it a paste. That way we can modify it. So what I didn't mention is this basic plot is actually type P, which stands for point. The one next one we did was type L, which is for line. And this one is going to be type, if I can spell it right, B for both. And if I run this, I will get a different picture even than I had before. So I zoom in and notice now I have my points like I did before and I have lines connecting those points provided there's enough space in between the points to put this line in. So this allows you to combine both of them together. And some of the other options that you can do here is, and this works on any time we're doing with points, is we can go in and change the points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to a website, which will be in the description below, and we're going to look at what kind of symbols we can use. Okay. So here we are. Uh, you can try to remember this URL if you want to, or it'll be right down in the description below. This is about halfway down on the page. And these are the symbols that you can use. So you've got the circle, which is one, which is what's currently being plotted. But you can use any of these. So let's give uh, one of these a go here. Uh, and notice there's some description up here. It says for symbols 21 through 25, you can do a border color and a fill color. So on this one, like here, it has the gray in the middle and the green on the outside you can change the green to one color and the gray to a different color uh, for this one let's just be a little bit weird and use like number two because it's a triangle or seven because it's a box with a cross through it so let's do number seven so we'll go back over to our studio um, we're going to close this and we're going to have to use the pch option so that's going to be our option here we're going to do PCH, PCH equals, and what did we say? Seven. Seven was the one we were after. Uh, and this here stands for, just so you can remember it, PCH is point character. And what I would do probably is actually, if you can do this on your own, is put in the comment and then come back over to the website, grab the URL, copy it, come back over to our studio, paste it in. And what that does is that will allow you to actually click on this. This will become hot. And if it doesn't become hot, at least you can copy and paste it into whatever browser you're using. So let's give this a go so that we can see what this does. So I run this and sure enough, now I've got the lines going between each. And the character changed. The point is no longer a circle. It's now this uh, box with an X in it. So this allows us to work with uh, our graphical parameters to change things up for us. And we can change the line type and the width type and other things. And if you look at that web page, you can see that there's a lot of other things you can do, which I'm not so worried about you being able to do everything there is possibly to be able to do in R. What I want you to do is understand that there's lots of resources out there and enough to get you going because when you get on a job or you're working on a project, that's really what you need to know is how to get started, how to think through R, and know what resources you have and start using them. All right, so this has been the 
our video tutorial on what is this scatter plots part three and it's part of statistics 321 at virginia commonwealth university all right let's move on to the next video